It's Tuesday, October 3rd, 2023. Let's talk about the news. From the Associated Press, Indonesia is set to launch Southeast Asia's first high-speed railway, largely funded by China. A high-speed railway project in Indonesia, which has been hobbled by all sorts of delays and ballooning costs, and which is called Wush, began operations yesterday, cutting travel times between the country's capital and another major city from about three hours down to around 40 minutes. This is one of the premier projects funded by China's Belt and Road Initiative, and though there are all sorts of well-founded concerns about it ever making a profit, the bullet train can reach speeds of up to 350 kilometers per hour, which is about 217 miles per hour, and may help residents and commuters reduce their reliance on cars, an effort that could pay off substantially, as the country's economy currently loses an estimated $6.5 billion a year to traffic congestion in its major cities. The project originally broke ground in 2016 and nearly doubled in price after being approved, but the government is still planning an expansion that would eventually link all four provinces on its main island with high-speed rail. From Reuters, Slovakia's poll winner defies European consensus on Ukraine. A pro-Russian Slovak candidate has won the country's most recent election and is now in talks to form a coalition government that would allow his party to run the country. Robert Fitzo has said he wants to stop providing non-humanitarian support for Ukraine, that Ukrainian extremists are to blame for Russian President Putin's decision to invade the country, and he has taken a generally anti-liberalization stance mirroring that of Hungary's current government. Vitzo has a history of doing what needs to be done to maintain his hold on the reins of power, so there's a chance he steps back from some of his more fringe election promises if and when he's able to form a governing coalition. But there's some concern that this could further soften the EU's stance on supporting Ukraine, though other analysts have suggested that Slovakia has already provided what military support they're capable of providing, and the main concern is that Fitzo would disallow the transport of military hardware from other EU nations through Slovak territory on its way to Ukraine. And from Axios, Emily's List head Lafonza Butler picked to fill Feinstein's Senate seat. Following the death of long-serving U.S. Senator Feinstein less than a week ago, California Governor Newsom has appointed the president of pro-choice organization EMILY's List, LaFonza Butler, to fill her seat until the next election. This appointment was initially fraught as Newsom's decision to appoint someone who would more or less be a placeholder until the next election, and thus someone who was not planning to run as he didn't want to put his thumb on the scale of that election, was controversial within the Democratic Party, but this choice seems to be popular with most of his constituents. There's a chance Butler could decide to run in 2024 as well, but in the interim, as a lesbian, she already represents the first openly LGBTQ plus senator from California and will be the only black woman currently serving in the Senate. If you're finding some value in one sentence news, consider leaving a quick review wherever you get your podcasts and or sharing the show with a friend. You can find out more about this show or subscribe to the email version at onesentencenews.com. And you can support this and other related projects like the Let's Know Things and Brain Lenses podcasts at understandery.com.